e h e r i t a g e p r o j e c t k a t s u i k e u c h i m i c r o s o f t r e s e a r c h a s i a a n d f o r m e r l y u n i v e r s i t y o f t o k y o w e h a v e b e e n c o n d u c t i n g e h e r i t a g e p r o j e c t w h i c h c o n v e r t p h y s i c a l h e r i t a g e i n t o d i g i t a l f o r m a n d t h e n s u c h d i g i t a l d a t a w i l l b e d i s p l a y e d i n r e m o t e p l a c e Heritage is priceless, irreplaceable, and vanishing day by day. The purpose of eHeritage has threefold. First of all, by using such digital data, we can safeguard such heritage. Secondly, such digital data can be used for education and promotion. Finally, by using such data, we can conduct archaeological research. As an example of eHeritage Project, I will explain our digital Bayon project to digitize Bayon Temple located in Angkor Wing, Cambodia. The Bayon Temple, located at the center of Angkor Thom, unites the outlook. Why we conduct this project on Bayon Temple? Because the central tower of the Bayon Temple is inclining year by year, and there is a possibility that Central tower collapse in near future. Thus, it is a good idea to model while it is existing. Due to the size of the temple, all the steps in modeling face challenges. In this particular project, we design new sensors and new software to overcome those challenges. First challenge was to obtain views from high positions. For this, we have developed a balloon sensor which makes a range sensor hung under a balloon. Certainly, we can bring a sensor to high positions. On the other hand, obtained results are twisted due to the wind. How to rectify this distorted data is one of the research issues. Those distorted data is rectified like this. We have also developed various other sensors, such as this one, to obtain range data of narrow areas. In order to scan large architectural structures, such as the Bayon Temple, we have to use different types of sensors depending on the location of objects in the site. To scan the deity faces of Bayon, we used a long range laser sensor named Cyrax. We measured each face from many positions, such as the ground, a scaffold on the roof, and a bucket lifted up by a crane. The data from different directions were integrated, and a 3D digital model of each face was built. To scan the narrow space between the terrace and the corridor, a laser sensor named Climbing Sensor, which moves vertically along a ladder, had been developed and was used. Bayon Temple is a huge architectural structure with a large number of high towers, and it is not practical to scan the upper side, especially the roofs from scaffolds. For this task, we used a balloon sensor, a laser sensor suspended under a balloon, which had been developed for this purpose. Two different types of laser sensors were alternatively equipped, depending on the distance to the target. The balloon was manually controlled by four ropes pulled from the ground. To minimize the effect of drift of the balloon, only a small amount of data was obtained in each scan. Thus, the sensor scanned the same place multiple times, and all the data were integrated later so as to build a dense 3D digital model. By scanning from the air, we could obtain the 3D digital model of the upper side of the Bayon Temple, which would not have been possible from the ground. Obtained data should be connected because each data is only from a limited area. Since the data is large, the design of software is another technical challenge. We prepare two step algorithms quick pairwise algorithm and precise parallel algorithm running on a supercomputer. This is the obtained data. 
150 meter by 150 meter by 40 meter temple is represented in one centimeter resolutions. Just one temple is not enough. Continuation is a power. We expand our effort over the entire Angkor Ruin to digitize all the temples in Angkor region. Next target was Priyavihira Temple, located on the international borderline between Thailand and Cambodia. The main reason why we digitized Priyavihira Temple is due to the dispute on the ownership of the temple were often occurs between two countries. It is also true that this temple's main axis along the north-south line, while the main axis of usual Angkor temples are along the east-west line. Since the temple buildings are distributed over wide areas, we have designed this mobile sensor platform. Of course, we use the conventional sensors to digitize the remaining areas. This is a video created from the obtained range data. The third example of modeling is Angkor Wat. Angkor Wat is a national symbol of Cambodia. We introduced a new schema for digitization by inviting Cambodian people for it. We conducted the technology transfer to Apsara Cambodian researcher so that we can change the format of digitization from Japanese team to Cambodian team. This is a scene where Cambodian people are conducting digitizations. Of course, our Japanese team conducted digitization of difficult part, such as high view point. We designed a new type of balloon sensor. Of course, obtained data is distorted. We have developed a new algorithm to rectify the data. This is a combined result with data from Cambodian team and those from Japanese team. Digital data can be used for preservation, but by using such data, we can conduct archaeological research because the computer has better resolution than human eyes. For example, Bayon has 173 faces, cave dug 50 towers. We digitize all of them and analyze them. It turns out that we can classify those 173 faces into three groups, Devata, Deva, Ashura. Moreover, learning similarity group analysis, we have found four similarity groups among 173 faces. In fact, similar faces exist proximity positions. Apparently, four different independent team of workers exist. Each team works on nearby faces. Another example of cyber archaeology is our Kyushu project. In Kyushu, there are many painted tumuri. We have scanned 10 of them and created digital contents. The main reason why we have conducted this project was those tumuri are not open to public to avoid deterioration from human CO2. As a result, few people know their existence. 
Thus, we have decided to digitize representative ones and to display at Kyushu National Museum. Ozuka tumulus, located in northern Kyushu, is one of the representative ones. We conducted 3D digitization as well as spectral analysis. This is a scene for geometric modeling by using range sensors. We have also conducted spectral measurements. By using those photometric and geometric models, we can create digital contents of the tumulus. One of the debating issues in Japanese scholars is under what condition this painting was done. Under torch, after completion of tumulus, or under sunlight during the construction. Using our spectral data, we run simulation, how it looks like under torch and under sunlight. There is a line which is visible under sunlight while invisible under torch. Thus, we can conclude that this painting was done most likely under sunlight. The ancient people painted this figure in the middle of construction. This is an example of how such e-heritage data provides a new interpretation on how the ancient people construct the tumulus. E-heritage project aims to develop techniques for safeguarding heritage, creating digital content, and interdisciplinary studies such as cyber archaeology, and apply such techniques to the real heritage sites. E-heritage consists of three branches of computer science, computer vision for e-heritage acquisition, cloud computing for e-heritage representation, and computer graphics for e-heritage display. This slide shows the references which describe our project in details. 